Hey, today we're gonna take it the hook use layout effect. And if you don't know what that is, good, because I didn't either. And I was really curious, what, what did it do, right? Is it like a use effect? Because it sounds quite similar. Why is it called use layout effect? I had some questions and I got them answered. Um, so let's dive into the hook, what it does, what its advantages and very specific use cases are. And um, then we're gonna answer the question, is it a useless hook? Like, do people need it or not? Because, you know, I've never needed it and chances are you didn't either. So it's probably useless, right? Okay, so here we are instead of a React application. I'm gonna try to keep this short. Um, I hope you can't tell by my voice, but it is, um, I'm, I am a bit sick. Um, nevertheless, um, before we dive into the use layout effect, uh, by the way, did you know that God uses uh, Azure for his website? So we've got Azure right here, not AWS, not Google Cloud Services. No, God has to use Azure, which I find uh, interesting. Uh, anyways, uh, that, that's beside the point of the video. Um, we are inside of a React application and you could see I've got it open here on my left. Um, also a very handy blog article on the topic by someone called um, MacArthur. Then we've got the documentation open here and the React app with uh, just a name, Bob. And uh, that's the example I want to show you. By the way, the examples I got from this blog article, a uh, really cool one. Uh, I don't think these examples are uh, anything special, but I'm going to link the blog article um, because um, he also mentions a tooltip example at the end of the article, which I found really helpful in understanding this hook. Anyways, uh, let's get into the application. And the default behavior that we are going to have right here is we're going to have a state, which is in this case, nothing else than a constant at the uh, initialization and then a name because we're never setting it. Essentially, we could also just say const name is equal to, you know, uh, Bob. And that would not change anything uh, in this particular app. So when we open that, we've just got Bob, read out the page, Bob, nothing changes, obviously. Okay. Um, and now let's get started with a, and let me disable GitHub Copilot here, with a use effect. As you can see up here, I've already um, imported use effect as well as use layout effect. Uh, so we don't need to do that later. Let's initialize the use effect and we only want that to render at the um, start. So when the component first renders, we want the use effect to run and uh, not anytime else. Okay, in this use effect, we're gonna set the name so let's say Paul Francis uses Azure. I, I don't know, what, whatever. Um, let's just save that. And um, because the use effect runs when the component renders, right? When the screen was painted, when the UI was painted, then the use effect uh, runs. So technically we could be able to see um, the name Bob first and then the name Paul Francis uses Azure. However, it happens so fast or React notices um, um, that the, the the setting of the state happens simultaneous with the a render and therefore oops therefore batches this so essentially when we render the component the set the state is set immediately we, we don't even see the name Bob but instead we see the name we are setting inside the use effect um, and however when we do something like uh, a synchronous pause, right? We've got to differentiate between a delay, which happens asynchronously, that we await because this is a promise, and a simultaneous pause. So a simultaneous pause will actually be um, blocking code. So when we write pause and then something like 1000 for 1000 um, milliseconds, this will be um, the equivalent of simultaneously or synchronously executed code uh, synchronously executed code and running for about one second. That will be the same thing. So we can uncomment that. As you can tell, the, the, the difference um, is this is synchronous and this is asynchronous. We achieve the asynchronous pause by essentially having a while loop that does a whole bunch of nothing uh, for the amount of milliseconds that we enter right here. So if you've ever wondered how to do a synchronous pause or si uh, simulate blocking code, um, this is how we do it. We can save that and let's see what happens. So let's restart the page. What happens under the hood is the component is painted and um, there is a loading logo up here, um, but the component is painted. And then after one second of a synchronous pause, um, the Pope Francis uses Azure's painted. And we can also do this um, asynchronously, right? So we can await the proper delay. So let's uncomment that. I've already prepared them, so we don't need to type them out now. Let's call this main is equal to an async arrow function. 
and in here we're gonna set the name then we're gonna call main right here and before we set the state however uh, we're gonna set the delay so we're gonna await the delay of 1000 and then set the name to Pope Francis uses uh, Azure so let's uh, repaint that and as we can see um, first we have Bob and then Pope Francis uses Azure so it says Bob for one second and then uh, after we're awaiting the delay uh, even though this is asynchronous uh, we're setting the state and that's why we have the little break however what happens when we get into the um, layout effect essentially what the layout effect is doing is um, it it happens after the DOM content is changed. Um, so I've prepared a little drawing here. So let's assume there are three steps to a React comp component update, right? The first one happens with the virtual DOM. So we are comparing the VDOM right here. So this is the first step, the VDOM to the actual um, DOM. This is what uh, React does under the hood, right? Then the second step, there we go. I'm, actually, no, I'm not going to draw the arrow. The second step, so this is from top to bottom. The second step is if there are differences between the virtual DOM, which is essentially just a huge ass JavaScript object, um, and the actual DOM, then the um, DOM, actually, we can just use the text, right? So let me remove that. DOM is getting updated. There we go. Can I make that a bit larger? Yes. Okay, so the DOM is getting updated. That is the second step. And then let's assume the third step happens below that. And the third step is going to be um, the UI is painted to the user uh, or in the browser, I guess you could also say. So the UI gets visible. So there, the, the changes or differences of the virtual DOM and DOM are compared. Then the DOM is getting updated. And then the UI is painted to the user. and um, According to the React documentation, the use effect happens right here. So you actually, we can also just use the text, use effect, there we go. And if you want to ca uh, calculate something um, before it gets painted to the user, uh, this is why it's uh, called use layout effect, by the way, because you can execute synchronous code that is gonna be blocking the UI paint. So this is where the, um, use layout effect comes in right here so whatever code we execute in the uh, use layout effect is getting executed synchronously and blocking the ui paint to the user until this code has finished executing whereas with the use effect we are only running this function once the ui was painted to the user and uh, that was essentially what i've just demonstrated to you so we can remove this and uh, let's go from the use effect to the use layout uh, use layout effect. There we go. And in this layout effect, because that's mostly what it's used for, honestly. Um, so in the article I mentioned at the start of the video, um, and also in the um, React documentation, in the official one, um, the, the blog author might have taken it from there. I'm not too sure. Um, the example is a tooltip, right? So we want to calculate whether the tooltip is colliding with the page uh, edges or not. And if it is, then we're going to um, compute it uh, somewhere else where it's better visible. And this would be a perfect example of where use layout effect would come in handy because this synchronous code is blocking until the, um, uh, well, the synchronous code is blocking and then when it's done and only then the UI that we've, uh, we've got here in the third step is being painted to the user. So the user never sees a tooltip um, that is out of the um, bounding rectangle of the viewport. Let's take a look at how this looks in practice. So assume we've uh, set the name to Pope Francis. Um, if we can leave out the users Azure uh, inside of a use layout effect. Um, let's go into the browser. Let's reload the page. And as you can see, even though we've got the use state Bob and setting the name in here, the difference is practically non-existent, right? We refresh the page. The Pope Francis is painted immediately. And um, that is essentially the same thing as with the uh, use effect that we took a look uh, that we took a look at at the beginning, right? Same thing happens, um, and that makes sense, right? Um, because whether or not it gets updated in this step or in this step, it, it doesn't really matter because use effect is executed so fast that even in this step after the UI is painted, we still only see the Pope Francis. However, 
when we um, await synchronous, well, not really await because there's for asynchronous, but when we just imagine the await for synchronous code, when we await the synchronous pause, so any blocking code that is blocking the thread, and that will be executed until, um, or only when that is done executing, the UI will be painted. So let's pause for one second and see what happens. Uh, let's read out the page. I don't think it was visible um, very well at the use effect stage of the video. However, um, when we did this in use effect, um, there should have been a Bob flash with this component, like the, the name should flash and then it's changed to Pope Francis. However, because this code is blocking, the UI is only painted once this name is set, right? So the synchronous code is being kind of in, in quotes awaited here. Um, and then the name is set and only then, because this happens, remember, uh, before the UI is painted to the user. So before the UI is uh, painted to the user, we're setting the name to Pope Francis instead of Bob, and only then are we painting it to the user. So essentially what happens under the hood is the component is loading for uh, one second, the second we are pausing right here, then we're setting the name, and then it's painted to the user. So there is no flash or of anything else, such as the initial state that we have, um, because this has already been run once the UI is painted, um, and after the DOM is updated, so in the in the second step. That is why you can't see a flash right here, and that is the very specific case that a use layout effect might be useful for. Um, and uh, in practice, it's called use layout effect because it is just often used for calculating um, layouts. So, is use layout effect a useless hook? Well, no, it has its use cases. They are very specific indeed, but um, for example, the, uh, the, the tooltip example I mentioned in the video, right? When you want the DOM content to render. So in the tooltip example, that was a tooltip, but maybe at the wrong position, right? The tooltip is positioned wrong, but you need it to render to calculate whether it is inside of the viewport um, or uh, if it collides with the edges, right? So you need it to render first. Then inside of the use layout effect, you're gonna check, well, is it colliding with the edges or not? And then you can uh, change that. So if it is, then yes, you can uh, position it somewhere else and only then will it be painted to the user. So the user will never see um, a tooltip that is rendered wrong. It will uh, the, the user will only see the correctly rendered tooltip. Whereas if you were using a use effect, then it would be painted in the wrong position. Then you'd calculate, is it wrong? You'd notice, yes, it is or no, it isn't. And if it is, then you'd render it in a different spot. Now on fast devices, um, you can try this out, this exact example, by the way, in the React official documentation, the beta ones for the use layout effect. On fast machines, so for example, my PC is pretty okay, I'd say the use effect works just fine. You won't see um, the tool to render it in a wrong position, even though it technically is. However, on uh, slow devices, you will, and it will look weird, right? It'll be rendered in the wrong position first, then you'll calculate, oh, this is in a wrong spot, and then you'll fix that. Um, uh, slow devices will see that. So that's when use layout effect comes in. And even though, yes, the use case is very specific and it's mostly used for layout, I didn't find any example, at least in the React uh, beta documentation, that didn't involve um, an actual layout use for that. So the tooltip example, um, yeah, it's very specific, but no, I don't think it's a useless hook. Um, but it goes back to my approach to web dev, you know, if you don't need it, don't really learn it as well. It is useful to have it in the back of the head, though, uh, if you need it uh, anytime, especially for something like a tooltip, uh, then you might be uh, remembering this video. I hope you do. All right, that was all I want to share. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.